Welcome to the Aerohive The More You Know video demonstration series. Hi, my name is Paul Vassar from Aerohive's Knowledge Services Department. In this demonstration, I will show you how to set up a network policy for configuring a simple employee SSID using WPA2 Personal with a pre shared key and a simple open guest network using a captive web portal for use policy acceptance. In other video demonstrations, I will show you how to set up a secure employee network using 8021X and a secure guest network using ID Manager. The intent of this demonstration is to help get you familiar with Hive Manager for a simple network deployment. From the configuration menu of Hive Manager, I can perform all the steps necessary to get my network up and running. There are three main steps to follow. In step one, I will create a network policy which will be used to define configuration parameters for a set of Aerohive devices. In step two, I will define two SSIDs, one for simple employee access and one for guest access. And then in step three, I will update the configuration of the devices. First, I will create a new network policy. Hive Manager provides unified configuration for access points, switches, and branch routers. You can select the components you are using here. In this demonstration, I will configure Aerohive APs and enable Bonjour Gateway services on APs to enable the ability for clients to access Apple Bonjour services across subnets. The APs will be in my corporate network, so I will call this policy Corp Network. And I'll give it a description. Now with my wireless access selected and Bonjour Gateway services selected, I will now click Create. Now I will configure a simple employee SSID. And click New. The profile name is the name of the SSID object, and the SSID is what is broadcast. Typically these are the same, but they do not have to be. I will name the profile Corp PSK, and I'll name the SSID the same. Next, for SSID access security, I will choose WPA2 Personal, which uses a pre-shared secret key. For the key value, I will enter a password that is at least 10 characters long and has a mixture of upper and lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols. This is for access to the network, so it should be secure. If you want to view the password as you type it, you can uncheck Obscure Password. And now I can save the SSID. Click OK. When a user connects to an SSID, there are policies that can be applied to the user, which are defined in a user profile. Under User Profile, I will click Add Remove, and then click New to create a new user profile. The user profile will be for employee staff members, so I will call it Staff. The attribute number is an identifier for this user profile used by APs to identify the user's policies, and it can also be returned by RADIUS or private PSK authentication methods to assign a user to a user profile. When possible, I like this attribute value to match the VLAN I will assign to the user, so I will enter 2 in this case. And I will assign the VLAN to 2 as well. Um, you can type it in here by just saying create new VLAN and typing in the VLAN you want to assign to. And now there are many optional policies that can be applied, such as configuring GRE tunnels, stateful firewall policies, and QoS. But to keep it simple for now, I will use the user profile to assign just the VLAN. And now I can click save. And save again. Here I see that if a user connects to the Corp PSK 
SSID, they will be assigned to the user profile staff, which will assign them to be on VLAN 2. Optionally, you can define additional user profiles for this SSID to change policy or VLAN based on the operating system of the device or Mac OUI. This is configured in the client classification policy in the user profile. At this time, I will use a single user profile. Now, I will create a simple guest SSID. And click New. I will call this SSID Corp Guest Open. And I will enable a captive web portal for use policy acceptance. In another demonstration, I will show you how to set up ID Manager for secure guest access using Arrowhive's private PSK functionality. But for now, I will save. And click OK. Now I am prompted to define a captive web portal. So I'll click CWP and click New. For the name, I will call it CWP Use Policy. For the registration type, I will select Use Policy Acceptance. For the Captive Web Portal, you can define the login page settings. You can import your own custom web pages or use our default. For now, I will use our default and I'll give you a quick example of how to customize a login page. Here you can set a background image, uh, change the colors, change the language of the use policy text. For example, here's French. I'll put it back to English. And I can change the footer image as well. If you want to change the use policy, you, you can cut and paste or type into the use policy box. You can preview your settings and then return and then you can save if you would like to. I didn't make any modifications, so I canceled it. You can also define what happens after people agree to the acceptable use policy. Here, I will redirect them to an external web page. And now, I will save. Next, I will define the user policy for the guests. Click New, and I'll call this my guess. Attribute number, I'll make this four because my VLAN will also be set to four. And for this one, I'll actually define a firewall policy. We have a built-in firewall policy for guest access. Um, we have Mac firewall policies and IP firewall policies. I will use an IP firewall policy, guest internet access only. This is the button to modify, so I'll just modify this policy. In this policy, you're allowed to access a DHCP server to get your IP address. You can access the DNS server. But then after that, if you're trying to get to a private IP address of any kind, um, you will be denied. And, but if you're trying to go to a public IP address on the internet, you will be permitted. This also prevents you from talking to other guests. I'll cancel out of this. And the to access policy, I'll leave blank. If I leave it blank and set the default action to deny, that means that there will be no policy, which means all traffic initiated to a guest will be denied. Now I'll save this policy and save. Now there are some other settings I can do, but for now, um, this policy will work. So I'll go ahead and click continue. All I have to do now is select my APs. I'll configure the router at a later time. And click update and update devices. This is going to update the configuration of the devices and it will update the Hive OS to match the version running on Hive Manager. Now, if you do not want to update HiveOS, because HiveOS does not have to match what's running on Hive Manager, um, you can use the advanced device update options. At this point, I'll click Update. 
and it's letting me know that uh, my initial policy for these devices is called default policy template. I will be changing this to my corp network policy. Now I just wait for this to be done. Now we just wait for this process to complete. It'll take a few minutes. Now we just wait for this process to complete. It'll take a few minutes. The very first time you perform an update, the devices get rebooted. After the very first time, Delta configurations are pushed using a protocol called CAPWAP so the devices remain active. It will take a few minutes for the devices to come back up after being rebooted. Once you see the date and time, your devices have re-established communication with Hive Manager using their new configuration. You can now test connectivity to your APs using Wi-Fi clients. Thank you for taking the time. Feel free to watch the other videos in the More You Know video demonstration series.